Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name's Corey Kramer. Today, we're going to be taking a look at uh, Diamondback Energy Stock. This one came in by request down in the comment section of one of my other videos. If you have a uh, stock you'd like me to take a look at on the channel, just put it down in the comment section. I'll get the ticker on the whiteboard behind me, and eventually I will make a video. Um, if it's a stock that's in the S&P 500, I post those on YouTube for free. The rest I post on Patreon and in the full Cyclical Investors Club service over on Seeking Alpha. Um, I'll have links for those down in the description. Uh, the Patreon's $5 a month, and you get a big discount um, if you're a member there To if you ever decide to join the full Cyclical Investors Club service. Um, I also have a 25% off affiliate link for fast graphs that I'm going to use here um, down in the description as well. As always, this isn't individual investing advice. It's just how I analyze stocks. So let's get into Diamondback Energy. So I don't have, um, this doesn't really fit the normal type of deep cyclical analysis that I would do um, because there isn't quite enough information from the historical earnings. So the first thing that I always look at is how, me, how much information do I really have in terms of historical data? Because that usually tells me the most about, that gets me about 80% of the way there to what the future might look like and to how I can kind of gauge how this business might perform over the medium term of say like five years or so. Um, so this is a deep cyclical business. We can see earnings even adjusted earnings fell 56% during COVID, which is kind of expected, but they're also coming down off this um, post-COVID bust, um, coming down off the boom that we see here. And the, the green shaded area are their earnings per share, adjusted earnings per share. Um, I like to go back and see, especially with oil companies, what they did um, really the past 20 years. So we can see what they did in 2008 during the big oil spike and then for a fracking business we you could kind of see what they did in 2012 when that kind of started peaking 2012 to 2014 um and you can kind of see what happened there and it can kind of give you an idea of what could potentially happen in the future how it follows kind of the general pattern that i would see with other similar companies and then that i can kind of just look at that really quickly and it can tell me a lot about kind of what to expect I don't have all that information here because I only have data that goes back to 2013. So usually, because there are other energy companies, you know, and oil producers, um, ENP, um, I would probably just kind of put this one off to the side personally. Now, I I am long um, Oxy. I made a video on Occidental Petroleum. I made a video on that. I like that one a little bit better because we do have Buffett buying and basically putting a floor in the stock. Um, he's certainly going to be a long-term investor. And I go in that video kind of the bigger picture things um, that I would think about. And I do think this is probably an area of the market that's at least fairly valued here. But oil is very difficult to try to like predict. So when I have a situation where something's really hard to predict, usually I try to buy it when I know we're in a down cycle. Um, so oil is what, like I haven't checked it today or whatever, but in the $70 range, I don't think it's gonna get too far below that in near term because we need to refill the strategic petroleum reserve. We have global oil tensions um but back in this period here 2012 basically up until covid saudi arabia what was basically flooding the market with oil um cheaper oil and put a lot of these companies uh, if not completely out of business definitely kind of damaged their operations a little bit in the u.s like the u.s frackers uh, because saudi arabia can produce oil cheaper uh, so that's kind of one of the big risks. The other big risk would be a recession, um, especially in the U.S. So the, where the price is today is pretty much where it's been, you know, the past couple years and really not out of line with where it's been, you know, leading into COVID. This was kind of a little bit of a dip here. Um, well, it was significantly lower than where the price is now, but when you consider the inflation and everything else that we've had, 
Um, I would say my initial reaction would just be this looks fairly valued, but it's a deep cyclical business. So if we go through a, rip, a pretty bad down cycle, it could fall a lot. I mean, if you just, I won't use this because oil was like negative there, but if you go back to like just January, 2020, that's 90 bucks a share. So you're looking at like, like a 40% decline or something from here. I think buying at today's price, you should be prepared to loot, to see the stock price fall 50% in a real recession, in a real um, oil down cycle. But uh, I, it doesn't look like that's like necessarily shaping up right now. So I kind of think that this, it really kind of would, you think of like portfolio, fat, what does the rest of your portfolio look like? Um, are you prepared to deal with kind of the volatility that you might have? Do you have any cash to kind of add to this area if we do get that downside? Like all those things would come into play. But the most recent purchases that I've made have been stocks like Diamondback, right? And they, they did just announce a merger. Um, I think it was Endeavor. I might be remembering that wrong. But so there is some con consolidation going on. It, I think it's probably like a decent deal. I, I, it's really hard to judge, and usually I would kind of, you know, hold off for a year or so. But I mean, really, I just think it's at an average price here. So what I would say is, if you're looking at it, maybe you ran a screen or something like that, and you saw that it wasn't only at a nine PE. I would ignore that PE because these earnings can fluctuate a lot. Um, they can fall negative. So the PE really doesn't tell you anything about the value of the business um, for a cyclical business. And so that's why I don't use PE. So that would be my number one tip. And again, they're having a merger. So all these earnings are gonna be adjusted. They're kind of, you never really know what you're gonna get. If you look at the basic earnings, I think you get a clearer picture of what's actually happened. So if you wondered, oh, how did they make money when oil was negative? Well, if you look at the basic earnings they lost, which is what is more expected. And we also see the stock price following the, this deep earnings dive as well. And we see the previous pattern when um, they, there was a big oil down cycle where that as well. So this tells me the basic earnings are probably more honest. This giant jump happened and then, but this last year, which I don't know if they've reported yet, um, it says estimated, so they might not have, um, are coming back down. So we don't know where these are going to land. My initial expectation is if we avoid recession, they'll probably come back down maybe above these 2018 levels or around there. Um, and if you look at the stock price, if they were probably looking forward, I mean, 135, that's kind of in the same vicinity that we are now so I think it's fairly valued here and you shouldn't really it, it's not cheap let's put it that way it's not cheap so if you looked at the PE and you thought it was cheap I would say it's not cheap but relative to the rest of the market which is quite expensive right now um, and also not positioned for an oil shock so this is the thing where I think it gets a little why you have to look at your the rest of your portfolio and just kind of see what where you're at and what you're trying. If you were overweight energy, I don't think this is one I'd be rushing into at all. If you didn't have very much energy, like say Berkshire Hathaway, um, getting some energy exposure for a potential price shock. What I mean, if oil went to 120 a barrel, um, the uh, most of the rest of the economy is going to be hurt by that. The only places that are not going to be hurt are the ones that are selling oil at $120 a barrel. And that could happen. There are scenarios where that could happen. So there's a little bit of kind of insurance there balancing. And if you got a big spike, I own a couple of these. I don't own this one. Um, but if I got a big spike in some of them in that situation, I could take profits and it could offset some of these losses that I was getting elsewhere, or I could sell in those profits and invest in maybe some stocks that get hurt during a situation like that. So it gives you some options in the portfolio level to benefit 
from a potential macro outcome where we don't really have any control otherwise. Um, other than even cash isn't so great because if every if the price of everything goes up more than expected because the price of oil goes up and the price of energy goes up, um, that's really just a drag on like everything else and inflationary ultimately if it doesn't cause a recession. So usually what you get is like a a boot, well, it, it varies, so I won't throw out. I mean, there's lots of different ways it can play out. In 2008, we it was during the uh, peak, like an economic peak, so um, it sent us, it was the trigger that sent us into the Great Recession. So, other times, um, in the early 80s, we kind of had a bad recession, but then came out of it once everything crashed. So, Usually if oil prices and energy prices stay high long enough, it causes a recession. Um, and it's, it's tricky to kind of get the timing. It's hard to say how the timing of everything is going to work out because um, interest rates are higher, which they haven't been in a long time. There's adjustments that can be made there. And, so, and then there can be a big disconnect between the timing of the economy and the stock market. Um, so it's you never really know the order of how everything's going to play out but i would say owning some of these energy stocks especially the u.s based especially um ones kind of like diamondback really um i think offset some of that price shock potentiality risk that may or may not happen but we definitely know it can happen it's happened it happened in the 1970s um and it could happen again and any way to kind of counteract that or even take advantage of it at the portfolio level, I think is pretty good. So this is a little bit different analysis and thoughts that I've done in the past. You can go watch my Oxy video, maybe if you want to see one on Exxon, I have one on Exxon too, um, if you want a little bit more standard versions. But for this one, to me, just generally, it looks kind of just fairly valued and it's gonna be like a portfolio level decision on whether a person wants to own this or one of their competitors. Um, but I don't see anything wrong really with owning this one. Um, as long as you understand it can fall 50% just as easily as it could rise 50% or 100%. Um, it really is gonna depend on the macro probably the most. Okay, so thanks for watching. If you found this a little bit useful, hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you have a request, drop it in the comment section. I'll see everybody later. Bye.